with this one, I want to introduce Joanna Siska from the DG Santé in, uh, in Brussels for the first presentation. Joanna, you have seen that uh, not everybody strongly agrees that this will be a success story for Europe. And my question a little bit to you, to your introduction is how, um, how can we make, how can we support that in the end, after the convention, everybody would strongly agree that we are on the right way on making this a success. Because that's, I think, all of our goal, that this is going to be a success for Europe, for everybody, for the patients, for the clinicians, for, uh, for everybody. And Joanna Siska is at the DG Santé. Um, she is a medical doctor, trained as a medical doctor, and uh, I have also seen she has studied ma uh, mathematics and physics. So, excellent educational background for this tough questions that we are facing. And she is now already for many years at the DG Santé as, and is in charge of health technology assessment in Brussels uh, in the ministry. So, handing over this one to Joanna. Now I would need my technical colleagues fac factoring in Joanna. Here we are. Joanna, I will move your slides. You can always you. tell me next slide. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And I would like to start by uh, thanking the organizers for inviting the European Commission to this very interesting meeting. And I have to say that it is really encouraging to see that most of the audience is positive when it comes to the newly adopted uh, HDA regulation. So next slide, please. So I would like to, to, to start by underlining the fact that this new regulation, which was adopted in December 2021, comes after um, a long period of cooperation. Cooperation, which was uh, supported by the uh, health program through three joint actions, and was also supported through a directive, the directive on uh, cross-border healthcare, and uh, there, the, the voluntary work through the HDA network was extremely successful. So in a way, this uh, regulation was triggered by the excellent cooperation between member states. Therefore, the Commission launched uh, in 2018 the proposal. And uh, this proposal was considered important and was adopted by the co-legislator, by Council and Parliament in uh, December 2021. Next slide, please. It is important uh, for us to uh, emphasize what are the key principles of this regulation. First of all, uh, the regulation lays down provisions for joint work on scientific clinical aspects of health technology assessment. Why? Because we know that the economic aspects vary from member state to member state, from country to country, and these economic uh, aspects are closely related to pricing and reimbursement, which remains a member state competence. It is also important to understand that the joint work uh, will be carried out by the experts, so by the member state HDA bodies. And like this, we will ensure high quality, timely reports, and we want to ensure transparency for all the actors involved. Of course, it is important that this joint work will be used at national level. So then, once the joint clinical uh, assessment report is carried out at European level, this will be the starting point for the national assessments, which will end up with a, a pricing and reimbursement decision, which obviously remains under the responsibility of the member states, together with the drawing conclusions on the added value. Uh, I would like also to mention that there are important provisions on engagement of stakeholders in joint work, for instance, engagement of uh, patient and clinical experts as individuals, in both joint clinical assessments and joint scientific consultations. But there is also uh, the engagement of organizations, uh, 
patients, healthcare professionals, but also industry payers who can provide input to the uh, coordination group on HDA, and I will give more details on this structure later. And another important uh, aspect, uh, the regulation foresees a progressive implementation, so there is time for preparing the implementation, and uh, after its implementation phase, we will see that there will be a, a, a gradual um, implementation of its scope. Next slide, please. Well, uh, I apologize, maybe this, uh, this uh, slide is a bit crowded. Uh, it is entitled Governance, but actually you see on this slide which activities are covered by the regulation, uh, what is its scope, uh, that it covers both medicinal products and medical devices, and its um, governance uh, structures. So I will start by uh, explaining why you see a lot of bubbles with MP and MD, because the regulation covers uh, medicinal products with central marketing authorization, but also a selection of medical devices, high-risk implantable medical devices, class 2, B, and 3, which uh, will receive uh, uh, ex opinions from the expert panels on medical devices. The same for in vitro uh, um, diagnostics medical devices, class B, for which there will be uh, an expert opinion from the respective uh, uh, expert panels. Uh, what are the activities included, these joint activities covered by the regulation? You see here four boxes with different colors. The first one it is joint clinical assessment. Uh, in the past, these were called relative effectiveness assessments and were carried out by the joint action unit. Uh, the second box refers to joint scientific consultations. In the past, they were called early dialogues, and uh, these can be carried out uh, only by HDA bodies or in parallel with regulators. Uh, they are well known in the, in the regulatory side, they are called scientific advice, but basically we are talking about scientific advice provided jointly by the member states' HDA bodies, that's why they are called joint scientific consultations. A third activity is uh, the uh, identification of emerging health technologies or horizon scanning, which will be extremely important for uh, the planning of the annual uh, work. And last but not least, it is the development of methodology for all these joint activities. And of course, the governance structures reflect the activities covered by the regulation. We will have a member states coordination group, which will act in two configurations, on medical devices and medicinal products. And this group will uh, oversee the work of the uh, member states experts, of course, each subgroup will be dedicated to the uh, respective activities covered by the regulation. Voluntary work will be also possible depending on the interest of the member state and the allocated budget. You can also see that the Commission will provide, will provide support uh, as Secretariat with uh, administrative, technical and IT responsibilities. And there is a nice blue bubble uh, called stakeholder networks. As I mentioned, uh, the regulation uh, also includes clear provision on involvement of stakeholders, and the Commission will uh, also uh, uh, include, will also have tasks to set up this stakeholder network, which will provide input to the uh, activities of all the uh, structures uh, laid down in the regulation. Next slide, please. So uh, I also I already mentioned that it is uh, very, these very important structures within the coordination group, uh, which has two configurations. I wanted to let you know that we just finalized the setup of the coordination group. We received the last reply uh, from member states on the 16th of May. So actually yesterday we uh, published the list of the member institutions designated by the member states as members of the coordination group, and we have also observers from the uh, EAA countries. 
So uh, this was one of our first tasks as secretariat, uh, and this was uh, finalized. Next slide, please. So uh, here again, a quite um, uh, detailed um, slide, but it's important for you to see that we have cleaner activities for the preparatory phase, uh, which will help uh, the implementation uh, activities. So I already mentioned, we finalized the setup of the coordination group. Uh, they will have a first meeting on the 21st uh, of June. We plan also to set up the stakeholder network by the end of this year, and probably to, to publish the results uh, beginning of next year. In the meantime, we will also start the work on drafting the implementing and validating work. Uh, which were uh, uh, included as tasks for the commission uh, for the for uh, for the next uh, phase, and of course we will uh, start discussing with the coordination group the drafting of the guidance documents, which are supported by the previous work of the NATA and uh, a service contract uh, which we uh, started uh, last year, and of course the implementation phase, as I mentioned already. It's gradual, uh, especially when it comes for medicines. The joint clinical assessments will start with cancer drugs and ADMPs, followed by orphan drugs, with the full scope uh, starting in 2030. Uh, next slide, please. So you can see more uh, about the uh, activities planned for the next phase in what we call an implementation rolling plan which is available on our webpage. Uh, I have to uh, admit that we just updated uh, the rolling plan, so actually I can send a new link to the organizers. But uh, we are trying to be uh, transparent and update this rolling plan uh, regularly in order to provide all the necessary information, not only to the HDA bodies, but all to the all interested stakeholders. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, what I would like to mention is this, that we need to see the HDA in the broader EU health agenda. Um, it was already mentioned in the introduction that HDA is important for innovation. It is an important facilitator, a facilitator for uh, access to innovative uh, medicines and medical devices. And that's why HDA was included from the beginning in the communication, in the commission communication on the uh, new pharmaceutical strategy. We are continuously working with our colleagues because uh, HDA and regulatory aspects should go uh, uh, hand in hand. And uh, the experience um, which we gained during the HDA network and the joint action in NAPA show that it is important to discuss about evidence generation looking at the uh, life cycle of medicines. And there is all, all, already a lot of work done, and we hope that we will continue, continue uh, in a successful way, uh, especially when it comes to the joint scientific consultations and uh, joint clinical assessment. Uh, we also need to look uh, at the uh, beating cancer plan and how the HDA regulation could serve uh, actually cancer patients and authorities. And I've already mentioned, the first to be jointly assessed are oncology products. And like this, we hope that through timely and high quality reports, we will support uh, evidence-based decisions by the uh, member states' uh, decision makers. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is an invitation uh, to an event organized by the European Commission on the 22nd of June. It is uh, a conference on the new HDA regulation, which is uh, addressed to all the interested parties. And I hope you will be among the ones who would be interested to, to attend this conference. The registration will open soon. And please um, look at our HDA uh, webpage because um, if you are interested, uh, please register. Uh, I hope 
I was not too long, and I have to apologize. I will not be able to attend the panel discussions, but I would be happy to uh, answer some questions if uh, organizers allow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, so um, open the floor for, for a couple of questions. So perhaps my first question would go in the direction, um, let's say, to get to the HTA regulation took a long time. It was three actions, joint action one, two, three, and to some extent we are now in a modified joint action four, this whole UNETA 21. And let's say, um, what are from your point of view the biggest obstacles to overcome to make this a success uh, for, let's say, patients, for clinicians, uh, for everybody? So could you let share your view on this one, the biggest challenges to tackle, to approach? Yes, we, we know from the beginning that all the regulations, implementation of any new regulation, will have some challenges. That's why we, um, we thought that by putting in place, by uh, contracting actually, a service uh, looking into uh, and bridging the gap between the UNATA Joint Action 3 and the implementation of the regulation, we will, uh, in a way, uh, avoid some of the big obstacles. We know that the joint methodology it is key when it comes to implementation of joint activities. So uh, maybe you see UNATA 21 as a joint action. For us, it's more than a joint action. There are deliverables which are extremely important for the coordination group. We have very a very good consortium, so we count on UNATA 21 to provide actually excellent documents, which will be the starting point of the guidance documents to be adopted by the coordination group. I think from our point of view, it is important to continue a cooperation which is already successful. We have excellent uh, activities together with the HD network. What we need at this stage is to put in place all the required structures. What has been done, we will see the first meeting soon with the coordination group. Once we set up the, uh, the stakeholder network, we will see the second in place. So, we are quite positive. I think we, we do not look, uh, we do not see the obstacles so much. We are quite positive and we hope that together with the coordination group and with the stakeholders, we will ensure the timely application of the, of the regulation. Thank you so much, Joanna. Um, I, I just want to ask a question. We've had a question come in from the, the virtual audience. And so I'd like to ask on behalf of them, in oncology, we've seen the development of many drugs that change survival or significantly change quality of life. These, at least those that change survival, should have a priority in HTA evaluation. Is that planned? Uh, as I already mentioned, all uh, oncology products which would receive central marketing authorization will be jointly assessed. So there is no prioritization or ranking or selection of the products once they are approved by the European Medicaid Agency. So in January 2025, all the oncology programs will be jointly assessed by the coordination group, so at European level. So that's why I was saying it is important to, uh, to have this in mind. That's why we think that uh, this is a way uh, through which we support the Europe's leading cancer plan because we will have joint assessments of all oncology products with uh, central marketing authorization and like this we will support uh, evidence-based decision at the national level. To everybody in the room, it's now open for questions, so if you have questions, raise your hand and good, Antonella. I have a question. So, based on what you just uh, mentioned, 
uh, how can we be reassured that what is uh, uh, assessed uh, at European level is then accepted or taken at country level? Uh, as you know, the regulation uh, requires member states to take into account this, uh, these reports. These reports uh, are, will be the result of the member states' experts. It's not uh, about uh, work carried out by external experts, but it will be uh, carried out by member states' experts. The scoping will take into account all the needs of the member states, and ultimately these reports will be approved by the coordination group, which includes all the member states. We don't think there will be duplication of work. There is no interest from the member states to duplicate the work carried out by experts at European level. Of course, member states may want to complement uh, what has been done at European level, if there are some particular aspects which have not been addressed at European level, uh, where there are uh, uh, big differences, uh, maybe uh, they, they have to be addressed at the national level. And of course, they need to address all the other issues, the economic aspects, the social, the, ethic, the ethical ones. But uh, after the adoption of the regulation, we think that there is no interest to duplicate this work, and we hope that this work will be really used at national level in a way that will serve uh, decision making, but it will serve also patients, especially patients, in terms of access to these innovative uh, medicines. Thanks. There's a related question from, uh, from the virtual audience. There are a couple of EU member states without HDA bodies. Will member states be supported, those member states, to build up capabilities and establish HDA agencies? Uh, indeed, we know that the level and the capacity of HDA systems is not equal across Europe. And uh, we have already uh, discussed with our colleagues in the reform to see how can we launch some activities together with them and support capacity building in the member states in need. So we know that this is an issue uh, which uh, may come up in the future discussions with the coordination group. And we are ready to address it because there are possibilities at European level to provide, uh, to fund activities uh, and ensure that we increase in time the capacity of all member states when it comes to HDA. Monta, to me, question. Uh, if we try to make the parallel with uh, EMA, uh, all member states are represented at EMA level, but they don't necessarily all agree when they vote for a product. Uh, all member states will be represented in the coordination group, and they may not all agree. For marketing authorization, there is no opportunity to disagree afterwards. But how uh, do you anticipate that uh, a member state that disagree with the overall coordination group opinion may handle that when they discuss internally their own perspective at national level? Now, thank you for this question. It is a very difficult question. We have not yet adopted even the rules of procedure of the coordination group to see how we handle voting and everything. Um, uh, as you have seen in the regulation, uh, most of the decisions we hope that will, will be taken uh, by consensus. And of course, there are rules for, for voting and even a need for voting, there will be one vote per member state, and, and so on and so forth. Um, we need to, 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 to see how uh, and to discuss this with member states. But um, this, this is indeed an important aspect which uh, we need to, to, to discuss with member states. If there is a disagreement, how, why this disagreement happens, and uh, for the moment, what we 
we are looking into is to have the right methodology in order to have uh, all the member state needs included when we start the joint clinical assessment. If the joint clinical assessment takes into account the needs of the member states, uh, then we hope there will be no disagreement. This scoping um, uh, step it will be extremely important. Will be extremely important. So I think we are working uh, on this, and there is uh, quite a lot of discussion uh, in our uh, in the UNETA 21 consortium. So we hope that we will address in the right way these aspects in the methodology together with the member states, with the coordination group, in order to avoid disagreement and to. Uh, yeah, to facilitate uh, the uptake by member states uh, for, for national decisions. I think it is uh, quite hard at this stage to, to see how we are going to handle it. You see, uh, European Medicines Agency has uh, more than 20 years uh, experience on this, and uh, this is not entirely solved. So we, we need to learn from them, but we need to work together with member states to anticipate this uh, in order to uh, facilitate their work when it comes to decision making. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, I have one more question from the, um, the virtual. Uh, so the question is, what pilot experiences with products will be run in the next three years to pilot the implementation of the regulation? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So I maybe I can give you some um, information about the UNETA 21 consortium. So as I mentioned, UNETA uh, 21 is a service contract uh, which was awarded to a consortium of HDA bodies following uh, a call for tender launched by us in 2021. Uh, the consortium will work for two years until September 2023. Uh, the main activities include development of joint methodology based on the work of UNETA, and these deliverables will be essential for the coordination group. And uh, the contract includes also some joint activities, uh, a number, but a limited number of joint scientific consultations and joint clinical assessments to be carried out by the consortium. Uh, so uh, we do not have, uh, at least for the moment, any other pilot activities included in the program. As uh, you may uh, recall, a piloting and joint clinical assessments were carried out through the joint actions. Now we uh, have some funding to continue these activities, but basically we focus now on the work of the coordination group in order to ensure that all the required legislation and the guidance documents will be available in January 2025 when we start the, the joint uh, clinical assessments and the joint scientific consultation. Thank you so much, Joanna. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. Um, and I, I, we've tried to get through as many questions as possible. I think in the interest of time, um, we're going to move on to the next presenter, but thank you so much. Thank you very much once again. All the best.